Hello, and thank you for viewing Networks and Network Leaders. I'm Ruben Sines, and I'm the Bishop of the Great Plains Conference. And I have with me today, Reverend Dr. Sherry Vaughn. Uh, Reverend Vaughn is an ordained minister with the Church of the Nazarene, and she's also the director of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness for the state of Kansas. I sought Reverend Vaughn uh, last year because I heard from the district superintendents that several of the networks had identified mental health as an important issue within your communities and your region, and you were seeking for ways to address it. When I met Reverend Vaughn, I learned about the resources that NAMI provides and also about something, uh, an initiative called FaithNet, which is a, an initiative that helps equip churches to be welcoming of persons and families that are struggling with mental health. So Reverend Vaughn, thank you for being here. Tell thank us you. a little bit about yourself and about the work of NAMI. So the work of NAMI, we provide education, support, and advocacy for those who have a lived experience with mental illness and their loved ones. Uh, that could be their family, their friends, and their allies. Okay. And we do this free of cost to those who come and receive the services right. that we provide. And as you said, one of those programs that we have is called NAMI FaithNet. And it's an interfaith uh, network resource to help those who are in the faith-based fields to learn more about mental illness. What is it? How can they stand in the gaps mm -hmm. with their members right. um, of their churches and congregations and be a service and a resource to them? So in the state of Kansas, how many churches would you say are, um, are part of the faith net network? Um, we do have a group in, not in Douglas County, okay. Kansas, okay. that's working uh, through a faith net program. But other than that, we don't have that many across the state of Kansas. But we, this is a national yes. organization of churches, in, interfaith, interreligious churches that are coming alongside. Right, okay. yes. All right, so we're looking to expand the, the, the network of, of faith net churches here in the state of Kansas and also and, in Nebraska. Yes. Yes, and so, um, so tell me, you know, you, 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 you've done some, some work with NAMI. What are some of the national statistics uh, of, you know, concerning mental illness mm -hmm. and mental health in, in the, throughout the U.S.? So one in five right. uh, will have a mental illness okay. in their lifetime. One in 25 will have a severe mental illness right. in any given year. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for those between the ages of 10 and 24. The second leading cause of death for those between the ages of 15 and 24. And 90% of those who have taken their, um, who have died by suicide or have attempted suicide mm -hmm. have an underlying, underlying mental illness, 90%. So my conversation with you, I found out that that your work with NAMI is more than just work. This is also very personal for you. It is. Would, would you care to share? Um, absolutely. So I have a 23-year-old daughter, and at the, tw at the age of 12, she had her first episode of psychosis, or what we refer to as a FEP. Right. And it was, it was severe. Uh, the behaviors that we were experiencing, uh, the symptoms that we were experiencing were severe. At the time, I did not know that right. it was the first episode of psychosis. And the first place I went was to my pastor uh, to talk with him and share with him what we were experiencing. And, and his recommendation was to start with our, our primary care physician. Right. And so we went to our primary care physician and while he was um, doing the examination with uh, my daughter, he turned to me and he said, Mom, I think what we're dealing with is schizophrenia. And my daughter just came unhinged uh, mm -hmm. almost immediately right. with, that, um, with that diagnosis statement. Okay. And she informed him that the research said he cannot diagnose a 12-year-old with schizophrenia, mm -hmm. um, shared out multiple uh, statistics, and research type information. She was doing her own research. She, so she was, knew something was not she right. She knew something was not right. right. Something was, something had changed uh, with right. her. And it was in that moment 
that I realized that she knew what I was trying to not accept right. or acknowledge, and that was that she knew she had a mental illness. And so, so how did you deal with that? As well, first of all, you, your first your first thought was, "I've got to go speak with my pastor." Mm -hmm. And so the pastor was open and welcoming to you. Yes. Uh, as well as your church community. Why was that important to you as a parent uh, at that time? Um, I think the most important thing was that that's where my hope comes from. Right. Um, is, is from my faith and my belief in Jesus. And I knew that my pastor would be able to help me walk through that right. um, and, and to give me the guidance that I needed. Um, so... So the church community yeah. also walked alongside of you, has right. been walking alongside of you right. during this time. And I trusted that they would join that journey with me. You know, whatever journey we were getting ready to start, right. I knew that they would be there with me. And that's what we're hoping to create throughout the Great Plains Conference in our Methodist churches, our welcoming right. places where, where people can turn to the church when they're experiencing <laughs> different levels of depression, anxiety, fear, just mm -hmm. the sense of overwhelming with, with worry. Um, you know, in your statistics, you said that one in five persons experience um, a mental illness or some form of it, mm -hmm. uh, and one in 25? We'll have a severe mental well, illness. So we have a, a community of 100 people, 20 persons may be dealing with some degree of, of, of mental health. Right, and, uh, one, and one will have a mental illness that's so severe that it's debilitating right. to maintain daily functions in life. Right. <clears throat> so, as uh, we, we, we've just been through, we're, we are experiencing a pandemic, and the pandemic has compounded the, the stressors on people, on everyone, mm -hmm. uh, more so with people with, with underlying mental health concerns, right? Uh, social distancing and, uh, and, and, and sheltering in place has, has really isolated people um, to, to a point that, that it, it, it has exacerbated their, their sense of hopelessness, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then you add other factors like underemployment or unemployment or illness in the family or, or, or lack of work or what, what happens? And, uh, you know, where, where is a mental wellness state of our of our communities right now in your assessment? In my assessment, I believe that, that we're going to see a rise in those national statistics. Right. Uh, there's already research leaning toward the idea that two in five now will have a mental illness and two in 25 will have a mental, a severe mental illness or um, So you're looking at a 100 percent increase in persons yes. that... Right. And, and an increase in uh, suicide and suicide attempts as well. Yeah. So how can our churches stand in the gap and, and be those places of healing for our communities? The best way is to learn more about what is mental right. illness. Right. And, and what are the resources that are available in, in your communities um, and then as well as statewide that can come alongside and help stand in the gap with that family and with that loved one with the lived experience of mental illness. So it's just, it's learning about it. It's being welcoming and it's, um, it's a show of compassion and care that I don't understand it maybe, but I'm here with you and I'm gonna walk with you and I'm not gonna judge what's going on. I'm just gonna be present. You know, we, we, before we went on camera, we talked about the ministry of Jesus and how oftentimes people were known by their condition, mm -hmm. the blind man or the leper or the, or the poor right. uh, or the deaf mute, and they didn't even have a name. It was mm -hmm. just like the condition was their identity, but that's right. not true. And, and Jesus moved past the condition to see the human being right. that, that was being held or afflicted by mm -hmm. that, and, and he brought healing. Right to the mind, to the body, to the spirit, to the relationships mm -hmm. in, in the community and, and so many other things. You know, how can we move past the stigmas that are often attached to persons mm -hmm. with mental illness? 
So one way is to change the way we talk about it. Um, so just like in the, in the days of Jesus, referring to the blind man or the leper, right. oftentimes in our communities, we hear ourselves saying, she has OCD, he has schizophrenia, right. Right. Um, they, have bi or they are bipolar. They are. Um, I think I may have said that wrong. <laughs> they, 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 they are, are bipolar. Uh, they, they are OCD. They are schizophrenic. Those terminologies, the, the way that we use our language is stigmatizing in itself. Yes. But when we change the way we refer and talk uh, and, and share in the conversation, when we change our words to, she has OCD. Right. He has schizophrenia. He has bipolar disorder. When we start changing the way that we speak about it, then we start reducing that stigma uh, for that person or individuals and start looking at the individual and not the disease and not the condition. So, Dr. Vaughn, you are here to invite us to, to view a presentation uh, mm -hmm. by FaithNet on September the 28th and the 29th mm -hmm. that that does exactly what uh, and I'm and I'm going to ask our network leaders and our network uh, clergy members and lay persons to join in on on that presentation but those that will be viewing the presentation on September the 28th or the 29th and, and we're going to put out information to them to to uh, offer some different time slots for them mm -hmm. to to, v to view that what are the, the hopeful outcomes of that presentation? What will they learn? And what do we want to see happen? Mm -hmm. uh, not just in activity, but what are the outcomes? If we really do this work and take it seriously, what, what is the difference we'll make in our communities if we do this right? So the first thing that we hope to mm -hmm. accomplish is that we'll learn more about this invisible disease called called mental illness. Okay. And why faith and spirituality are important for people and their families who are affected by mental illness. And then what can we do as a congregation, as a church, as a faith-based community, right. what can we do to help? And how can we step in the gap and be there to serve and walk with them in this journey? So we'll so, also be joined by the director from Nebraska, uh, Karen Meadows, Yes. Right? Yes. And so she will also be on the presentation because we have churches in two states, Kansas mm -hmm. and Nebraska. So it's important that we partner with, with NAMI of Kansas and NAMI of Nebraska uh, just for accessibility to resources and support. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, when we talk about, about hope, right, who, who we are as a church, we're, we're people of faith, of hope, and of love. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way that we can be um, a, a beacon of hope in our communities to persons that are struggling so that others like you can see the church also as a vital um, a healing partner for a person's wholeness, not, mm -hmm. not just to treat the, the, the illness, but also to treat the, the, the spiritual life, which is, which is part of so much of part mm -hmm. of who we are. Yes. We're not compartmentalized beings. We, we are integrated beings mm -hmm. that mind, body, spirit, soul, relationships, everything mm -hmm. else needs to be made whole again so that we can be complete. Yes. And so I see this as a way to, to, to help accomplish that mm -hmm. and to reclaim our ministry. Is there any last words that you'd like to share with, uh, with our thousand congregations <laughs> and our 108 network leaders and so many others? And, 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 you know, and even thinking about this is not about us. This is about the people in our community. Christ calls mm -hmm. us to, to hear and to listen and, and to reach out with God's outreaching love. So what, what would you say to our, those that are listening to encourage them to say, I need to be on that presentation uh, on FaithNet on September the 20th or the 29th. What, what would you say to them? I guess maybe the most important thing I can say is that we are not alone on this journey. And the individual with the lived experience is not alone. And the yes. family member who is walking with that individual with the lived experience is not alone. And we would so much welcome any and all to come alongside and walk with us 
on that journey because it is a lifelong journey. Yes, it um, is. And so the, the more that come along, the more that support, the more that come with compassion and care and understanding and saying, I want to be a part of the help and the care and, and I'm going to be here with you to do this. And now with NAMI, we'll have tools and resources. Right, right. right. That we, we don't have mm -hmm. to reinvent it or, de or develop them. We have an organization that has already uh, done all that good work and knows how to mm -hmm. best approach uh, the, the, this situation from a helpful uh, standpoint and also join with other people right. that are involved in this work as well. Right, so yes. Well, listen, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I'm excited about what's going to be happening, and thank you so much for sharing your story. It personalizes it, and uh, and uh, I, I know that your story is going to resonate with many of our clergy persons mm -hmm. and many of our, the people in our pews, and um, and God God's in this, and we're going to we're yes. going to do some good work together. Yes, appreciate all that you do, and well, uh, I look you. forward to working with you in the months to come. I um, do as well, friends. God uses medicine, hospitals and various psychotherapies to, to bring healing, but these resources are insufficient to meet the, the totality of our health and wellness needs. Uh, today, Christ is calling our churches to reclaim and to offer healing ministry along with teaching, preaching, and discipling ministries. Indeed, the local church is a primary healing community. Uh, more and more healthcare professionals, as uh, Reverend Vaughn pointed out, are recognizing that spirituality is such an important part of our healing process. Mm -hmm. uh, several miracles in the Bible uh, that are recorded um, by the, the prophets and by Jesus and, and by the apostles uh, dealt with the healing of the spirit between people and God, dealt with the healing of the body, dealt with the healing of relationships as people were reintroduced back into society as, as healed persons, but, but it also dealt with the healing of the mind. People came into the right mind, for example, we're mm -hmm. told. Uh, and Paul talks about the need for the renewing of the mind. So the, the mind and how we think and how affects how we view the world as either a place of hope or a place of, of, of danger and despair. And so to, to be in the right mental health is important. Our congregations, I trust, can be and will be healing and welcoming places for a hurting world. Uh, we can be places that people can turn to, uh, along with turning to doctors and hospitals and psychotherapies, but people need to be able to turn to our churches, especially when they are feeling depressed or anxious or afraid or just overwhelmed with, wear, with worries and the cares of the world. Um, I'm asking our networks uh, leaders in our networks to join in a FaithNet presentation for 90 minutes on September the 28th and the 29th to learn more about mental illness and how we can partner uh, with NAMI and also with each other to, um, to make a collective impact and to find a place where we can intervene in our communities so that we can be that healing place for uh, the people that are looking for hope and that are looking for help in this time. So you'll receive more specific information in the days to come with regards to the time for the presentation uh, and also an invitation to participate. This will be an ongoing conversation. This is not uh, something that we will do in addition to all the other things that we will do. This is part of our identity as, as the body of Christ, as a healing uh, and teaching a body of Jesus Christ in our community. So again, uh, Reverend Dr. Vaughn, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your thank work, you. and thank you for your willingness to partner with our churches as we move forward and help stand, uh, stand in the gap uh, for persons and for families that are struggling with mental illness. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you too. The grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with your spirit.